Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the week ahead, of course discussing what could be moving and shaking the markets this time in the financial markets for the week beginning Monday the 15th of May. Joining me as always is my trusty senior market analyst Jasper Lawler. Jasper, let's kick off first about uh, the Bank of England Super Thursday. So as expected, no change to rates and interestingly no bigger vote split in terms of the next rate hike. I mean, what message do you think the Bank of England has sent to the financial markets about the future path of, of interest rates in the face of rising inflation and, you know, a bit of a sluggish economy? I think if I could encapsulate it, it probably just steady as you goes, policy not set to change too much. Uh, as you say, Kristen Forbes was still the only dissenter. Everybody else on the committee seems pretty on board with keeping rates steady. Um, inflation seems to be on the rise. Um Growth may be looking a little bit more cautious. Uh, that was pretty much reflected in their um, in the way they adjusted the numbers. The adjustments were pretty small, I would say. Um, the pound fell off, but I would say that that's just more. We came very close to one thirty, a big psychological level in cable. The pound against the dollar, and uh, the market's just not quite got the incentive, particularly from this report from the Bank of England. Uh, to to push it beyond that at this stage. Well, still keeping in kind of the conversation of the UK, we've seen a um, a draft of Labour's manifesto, which has been leaked for for Labour. Conservatives are meant to release theirs next week. Talking about the UK 100, we've we've seen it probing near record highs. I mean, could next week's release of the the kind of election manifestos could it push it that bit higher? So I think there are two dynamics to look at the election manifestos when it comes to the the, uh, the stock market, the UK 100 particularly. Mm. Um, one is how um, individual companies can be affected. So we've already seen the conservative policy about uh, price caps in the uh, the energy industry. Uh, that's weighed on the en- uh, on energy shares, um, mm. utility shares rather, uh, like um, you know British Gas owner Centrica, mm-hmm. um, sc- uh, Scottish Power, the big SSE. Exactly, all the big publicly publicly listed utilities. They've been hurt by how future policy could change after the election. Um, l- the leaked Labour uh, manifesto talked very much about um, nationalising a few industries. So a notable one was. Uh, National Rail. Mm -hmm. Um, So taking all those currently private franchises back into the public realm, um, you know, we've already seen some of those shares for the companies that um, are mostly FTSE 250 companies uh, coming under pressure. Labour aren't likely to come into power. So I think at the moment the market's taking these Labour policies with a pinch of salt. Um, So the big one will be Monday. Uh, when we're expecting to see the, the Tory one and any under any other industries they're targeting, uh, because this government under Theresa May looks a bit more interventionist than previous Tory governments, so that's generally a bit of a negative for the stock market. The other dynamic I just wanted to mention is that um, if it's seen as generally good business friendly overall policy from the Conservatives, especially, um, that is going to weigh on the pound, um, going to, to going to help the pound. Oh, well. Exactly, way on the footsie, yeah. Okay. I mean, looking further at some of the events we've got next week, and still talking about FX, of course, we've seen quite a, a big pullback, actually, in euro dollar from, from 110. We've got eurozone first quarter GDP figures coming out and April inflation figures. That's both being released Tuesday and Wednesday, respectively. What movement could we potentially see from our traders' favourite FX pair? Well, I'm still thinking that this pair can move higher um, just because of the same factors overall that we talked about on previous occasions where I think the ECB, European Central Bank, is getting to the stage where they're going to taper um, their asset purchase program. That brings them more into line with the Fed, Mm -hmm. uh, the Federal Reserve in the US. So that divergence in policy is going to get smaller. I think that helps the euro. Uh, But you can't deny the fact that 110 is a big level People were talking about parity not so long ago before yeah. the European election. So we've come a long way mm. and there's some profit taking taking place. And, um, you know, we don't we, we can never know for sure how far that can take the market lower. Um, there was a couple of big days lower, um, which showed there doesn't seem to be much enthusiasm for taking it beyond 110 at this point. OK, 
Okay. Moving on to commodities. Commodities, sorry. We've seen quite a mixed bag of uh, Chinese data being released, but they are weighing on metal prices. We've got some more Chinese data coming out next week. We've got industrial production, retail sales, investment figures as well. What can you tell me about the drop in copper and silver prices we've been seeing and, and will it be sustained? Well, I think you're right in that the, the general trend of Chinese data has been to the weaker side, and that's been weighing on commodities across the board, arguably even oil as well from a demand standpoint. And silver, notably, I think we're putting a chart up on the screen now, has just fallen off a cliff. And so it needs some probably pretty decent Chinese data mm. um, next week, um, particularly that industrial production data we want to look out for because silver has its industrial uses. Um, to turn around this decline. The market's really oversold, so we're looking for some catalyst for the bounce back. That that Chinese data could be it. Okay, is there anything else on your radar next week? What about US markets? Well, I think the, we've had some solid earnings in the US, but the, uh, and we've seen the S&P um, and the NASDAQ push into record highs. We haven't quite seen the same from the Dow yet, so what we're looking for is the, the Dow to follow through with uh, record highs too. Uh, what can affect that? Well, the big story last week was that uh, Donald Trump fired FBI Director Comey. Yeah. Um, that's quite a big political scandal in a way. Um, markets weren't too happy. It wasn't a massive sell-off, but the general take on it, I think, is that if anything, it takes away from Trump's ability to push through his spending and taxation mm -hmm. plans, which is part of the reason the market's been leaping higher in the last few few months. So. Um, if he's involved in his own Watergate, um, needless to say, that's going to make policy a little bit tricky. Of course. All right, Jasper, thank you very much. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this week ahead, but good luck trading. Don't for forget to connect with us on social media and goodbye for now.